Welcome to Adventure Freaks, a podcast on living abroad on a budget. All right. Well, today um, I'm with Andy Atkinson. Andy, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Appreciate you, man. Um, Andy Atkinson lives in Panama and he's originally from the UK and he has his whole family down there. You have two kids, right, Andy? Yeah, that's right. Myself, my wife, and my two kids. Okay, in awesome. Okay, and Andy has a company called Cracking Social Media, and you can find them at crackingsocialmedia.co.uk online. So again, it's crackingsocialmedia.co.uk, and you'll find them, and they're involved in digital marketing and social media and all that, and they help a lot of small companies. Um, with those aspects and he'll elaborate more on that but um my question andy so this is my first question to everybody you are from the uk and there are so many amazing and beautiful places over there to um live in I, and i understand there's a lot of um uk residents that are that are leaving the uk and heading for portugal right now i've met people that live in also spain italy how did you of all places find Panama. And it's pretty unique. Yeah. That is really unique. And I love Panama. I've been down there a couple times and can't wait to tell you some of the places that we've been, but it's just an awesome country to land in. How did you find that from, from the UK? Yeah, it's funny. There's no sort of great sort of economical, spiritual, you know, sort of reason that we've got, oh, we must go to Panama, you know, any great story like that. It's, it's simply that I suppose myself and my wife, Anne, when it's a Welsh name for you, We'd always wanted to emigrate um, and we wanted sort of different opportunities, you know, better weather, you know, climate, um, culture and all of that. And I think one of the one of the places Brits always look at, I suppose, seems to be the number one is Australia. That seems to be the obvious place, even if you just when we said to people in the UK, oh, we're going to be emigrating. Wow. Have fun in Australia. You know, it's it's just assumed that seems to be the obvious place for a few people. So you've got. The obvious places were Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and we love the states. We, you know, we're trying to tick off every single state, road trips, and different things. And um, so we love the idea of Canada and proximity to the states. But it was so freaking expensive. You know, if we could make it work financially in Canada, it was going to be minus forty for half the year or more, which sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when, you, when you think, oh yeah, we'd dress for it, we'd have all the right clothes and all the right gear and, you know, you, it would be different. And, but then that's fine when you're going out on a bit of a mission, but when you just want a pint of milk from the shops, you know, it's going to be, you know, and you've got to get all that dressed up and clear the car and we think, no, I just couldn't do that. It's not for us. And, and Australia, we just couldn't make it work. And that was somewhere that really appealed. Um, and I think it's quite easy and safe, Australia, because it's the same language. There's lots of British people. You, you sort of just fit straight in and it's very similar cultures. So that, you know, is a very easy transition. But they're very, very strict. And um, we just, even though my wife is an engineer by background, they didn't accept her qualification. Mm. Even though it's identical, but it just, you know, it would have meant going back to university. And then that sort of sliding scale would work against you for three or four more years in university means you're three or four years older you've got three or four years less savings because you've now mm. been at university and so it couldn't make that work new zealand we probably could post covid whenever that would be um they, they they would accept the qualifications and all of that was absolutely fine they were really quite chilled it's kind of a, if an employer wants you then yeah cool then they must have done the due diligence then we want you as a country you know it was seemed far more relaxed in that sense mm -hmm. uh, but the weather just did not appeal you know we don't want to be swimming or surfing with a wetsuit not that we can surf that's on the list <laughs> um you know we just it just didn't appeal and i think it was a bit battered and bruised by the australia experience i was just sort of sat on my phone and i just sort of googled you know easiest places in the world to get residency just as a kind of a laugh being a bit silly because i thought this is really hard in australia i wonder if it's the same everywhere and that's when Panama came up in that list. And because Panama famous, well, not famously, has had what they call the Friendly Nations visa, where if you're a citizen of, I think it's 50, one of 50 nations, it's a lot easier. You've just got to prove your economic ties, blah, 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 a few different bits and pieces. And after that process, that's it. Hopefully all being well. So we were, long story short, um, we were 
we'd done a lot of research and actually we thought, wow, Panama does look cool. That This is the place for us. And we've done a huge amount of research by this point. So we're planning to go in 12 months and then they made the changes to the friendly nations visa. So we had to beat the clock and just move. So here we are living in a country that we had never visited before moving here <laughs> as a family wow. of four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what city are you living in? So we're now in a place called Charme, Punta Charme, which is um, an, an just over an hour from Panama City. Um, okay. It's one of the closest bits of sort of nice beach, one of the first main to the real nice bits of beach you come to. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a little peninsula that sort of sticks back up and points. If you go all the way to the end, it's sort of pointing back towards Panama City. Um, yeah, me, but it's just me... gorgeous. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I'm going to pull up a map. I, I think I have a map here and we can kind of, let me see if I can do this here. I'm going to try to share and then you can kind of hone in on where you're at. Compared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Here's, so Panama is this little, little peninsula that connects to Colombia and Costa Rica. So let's scroll in here. And interesting, as you say that, one of the things that made us feel um, very reassured about Panama was the sort of economic um, activity in Panama with the Panama Canal, the sort of geopolitical significance that that gives to the country that, you yeah. know, with the United States, um, with China, with the rest of the world, that, you know, Panama can't really fail. It has to be, you know, supported and looked after it. Well, that's the impression that you get, hopefully. Yeah. Um, the closed border there with the Darien gap with, you know, uh, with Colombia and it all just sort of comes together and think actually no this does seem you know a really good place to live it's not a, a, an economy that you'd expect to sort of collapse in a couple of years with a sort of military coup or whatever We're yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so you're you're located in an hour outside what's the name of the city um so it's Charme Ponte Charme and if you can see Veracruz to the left on the beach and then you uh -huh. further down past Chirera and you keep going down so we want to go down the map zoom out a little bit more tiny little bit more and there you go you've got charme bay mangroves and you can just see or you just saw punta charme sticking up um so if we just scroll a tiny bit more just where it says there we go there's punta charme okay so you're right here so I, yeah i won't say what it's described as by most of our friends but we don't live on the tip as they would describe it we live towards the base <laughs> nice okay so so are we're you... down by this La Boca de Charme, that sort of area there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So these beaches are just awesome. They're just beautiful, world-class, amazing beaches. You know, we've got pretty white sand. There's, you know, palm trees. You've got the mountains behind you. It's just absolutely idyllic. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's not that we thought, you know, we, we have to live in Charme, but it really, really appealed to us that, you know, the proximity to the city thinking with our heads, not just our hearts, that as the boys get older and, you know, to be an hour from the city is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. So it could be that we settle when we buy a property. It could be Charme, it could be Gorgona, Coronado, somewhere in the San Carlos district there. Mm -hmm. um, we're very happy with it all. We love it all, really. Um, there's a few challenges here, but yeah, that proximity was really important because it's not like, not like other countries. And, you know, even if you take the UK, which is a drastically different, probably bad example, but you've yeah. got London. And then after that, you've got, you know, Manchester and Birmingham and Edinburgh and all these different cities. Panama City, you've really got one city of sort of economic activity. If you wanted a job or you wanted an opportunity, it's going to be in Panama City. Everywhere else, they're, they're like more like little hubs and they don't, you know, there isn't the sort of, you know, there aren't the employers or any jobs or anything in that, you know, apart from sort of very localized jobs. Mm -hmm. So it, if you still need to work or you still, you know, want certain things from a city, then really in Panama, you've got to be in or near Panama City, it appears to us. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys spend some time in Panama City? Did you consider Panama City? We never we never really considered Panama City. Um, it was never for us because we wanted to be by the beach. Um, and, the, you know, it's not there are nice beaches in Panama City. You know, you've got, um, you know, the ships you know, doing their thing and whatever else. And it's, it's not, you know, a beachy. It's lovely to walk past the sea and everything, but it's not, you know, sea you can really swim in or anything. Mm -hmm. So it didn't appeal. We had our month there while we were filling out our paperwork, dealing with lawyers and everything else. And that gave us a really great insight into the city, you know, sort of just 
walking around, getting on the on the metro, on the train, getting Ubers and taxis and different yeah. things and going all about the place and seeing it. And, and it is a cool city. It is cool, you know, to have a rainforest, you know, in the city, to have, you know, huge shopping malls and everything else. The contrasts are just brilliant. Mm. Massive skyscrapers, huge skyscrapers standing next to sort of like little houses or like the odd little shack sort of thing that it looks like. It's just right you know these crazy contrasts it is a great city and a fun city but we just want to be by the beach so we ex we had a plan to explore um and to live in six different places for a month so like all great plans it didn't happen um we had our month <laughs> in panama city uh we had our month where we are now which is this panama west day area and we had our month in the absolutely amazing peda sea um on the azuero peninsula um absolutely incredible loved it there and that was a really difficult decision to not live there so Where as you is scroll that down the map as you scroll down further just a bit further that's it pedersey is now this you're on this peninsula just where your mouse is a bit further to the left is pedersey exactly okay and we were planning to go to bocas del toro and to boquete and we know we're not going to live on bocas because of you know it, it looks beautiful but you know it's very isolated and lots you know, islands only accessible by boat. Sounds great, but again, yeah. is it probably going to suit the kids as they get older? Boquete, we haven't moved from Wales or from the UK to sort of have that cooler weather, which bizarrely is pitched by so many people that are trying to bring people here on tours and different things. It's like, you're going to love it in Boquete because the weather's so cool. It's so great. The climate is so cool. But yeah, but we didn't, even though I'm sweating to death right now, we didn't move here for that. It just, that's not a selling point for us. Mm -hmm. So if you considered the weather, the climate that we want, then it really, for us, it only left this as Wero Peninsula, which this hub of amazing people and activity is Pedersey. And it left this whole district of Panama West Day, where we're back at the moment, uh, which just clinched it, which is charming. And if you then had the two, we had to balance up the fact that Pedersey is just incredible, but is very far away from anywhere. It's sort of, you know, if you want to catch a flight, you're probably going to drive for five hours. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to um, go to the city, it's probably going to take you four hours or whatever else. So it's just, we had to just think, yeah, okay, it's going to be this Panama West Day area. So that's in a very long winded answer why we're back here. Yeah, yeah. So this is saying it's, it's called Punta Chame. Yeah. So we haven't quite figured out yet if Punta Chame, which is Chame Point, so it just relies to uh, it just um it's just the, the the actual point itself because there's other names all the way down so we're more in a place a sort of behuko um but i think generally people understand punta charme to be the whole thing yeah yeah and how are the 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 people that are living there are primarily a lot of expats that live there or is it mostly panamanians it's very weird because we understood this we understood from our research and speaking to people and whatever else that there's going to be all different types of living arrangements you know you can be in a completely expat gated community which does not appeal to us at all you can be in a sort of bit of a mixed community you can be in a very panamanian community that's one of the things we loved about pedersey it's all mixed in there aren't really these big gated communities coronado is very gated it's very separate you actually do go through a gate to the whole sort of town Pedersey, it's all mixed in. It's lovely. You know, local kids with, coming to a birthday party for our kids and everybody, you can walk everywhere and you get invited to people's house for dinner. Fabulous. Recommend it to anyone to look at. Um, where we are now, we are renting in a, in a gated community, which is not where we want to live long term. But whilst, whilst we're renting for a little bit, it's kind of perfect just to have the pool and have the other bits and pieces that we need and just have a nice, clean, tidy house and know where we're at. Mm -hmm. um but it did shock us because even though we were prepared for this we didn't think it's how it was here so we've moved to a place which is primarily weekend homes so it's it's, it's vacation homes so we thought oh, our kids will have friends they might be american canadian south african maybe um panama middle class panamanian they've got a home here whatever it might be and um, not the class matters but you know what i mean um on affordability basis we thought you know kids will have friends there's nobody here, not a soul. Um, they only come at weekends um, mm. because it's just sort of wealthy Panamanian second homes, it would appear, which isn't quite what we were told, but it's fine. It means we've got the pool to ourselves all week. <laughs> um, and at the weekends, I mean, it doesn't even get busy at weekends. 
But just down from here are those seemingly really nice little mixed communities, um, fabulous little Fonda restaurants. You ever been to a Fonda when you were here? A Fonda? Yeah, Fondas oh. are just these incredible little um, restaurants where it's basically like you get what you're given. So I walked in, you know, in my best Spanish when we had four friends with us and I was, um, una, me una mesa para ocho personas, por favor, well, you know, table for eight, please. Then explained that, you know, could, could we see a menu? Asked, could we see a menu? And she's just like, chicken. I was like, sorry? <laughs> chicken. Oh, okay, chicken. So, okay. Um, pollo para ocho. <laughs> so, you know, chicken for eight, por favor. Um, and that, that's basically it. They cook what they cook and you eat what they've cooked. There is no choice and it's incredible. So yeah. you might pay $3.50, $4 for this huge amount of food and you just eat whatever you eat. They're predominantly locals. You don't see, or we don't see many expats in the Fondas, um, but they're just fantastic. Mm. Amazing people, lovely people, very friendly. Um, but yeah, it's so, you know, we can take the dog. Oh, that's it. We're a family of five now since we moved here. Oh, congratulations. Thank nice. you. So we re rescued a little dog called Manchita. Oh, um, nice. So rescued sounds very grand, doesn't it? It always sounds like you've run into a burning building. <laughs> you're <dog> yourself, <laughs> hideously scarred on the hands now as we reached out for the dog. Hey, man. But no, he was a lot uh, of that's great. No, I love it, man. I love people that are, that, you know, helping helping pets find a, a family, you know, and a place that they can call home. That's important. I love that. So, yeah, it's chilled out. You can take the dog to these places. You can, you know. So, yeah, there is that little bit more of a sense of community as you move into the sort of tiny villages and all of that around us. Um, mm -hmm. But absolutely zero community or certainly Monday to Friday <laughs> where yeah, we yeah. are. What's the name of that again, where they just serve one dish? Fonda, Fonda. F um, sometimes you get two dishes, some F, F O N D A. Yeah, um, sometimes yeah. they do a few more and it's like, um, like in the UK, we'd have what, like a Chinese buffet and it's all these silver hot dishes, you know, filled. And they might do a, you know, a few more different things, but generally the very local ones, if they're not in the city, tend to be one or two dishes. Yeah, yeah. So you actually, so basically with all that, you, you identified Panama as a place that you, you guys decided on based on the, the ease of, of obtaining residency or, or the less yes. difficulty in obtaining yeah. residency. I mean, that certainly caught our eye and that certainly meant that Panama was a, you know, a strong possibility that if we wanted to live in Panama, boom, you're pushing an open door, so to speak. Hopefully. What, are, what are some of those things that make it easier than other places? Okay. So instead of having to sort of meet certain qualifications, income criteria, hoops to jump through long, long, long winded processes like in Australia or somewhere else, Panama was that you have, and I'm saying had to now because they've changed. That's the reason we had to move so quickly. They've changed or sort of done away with the friendly nations visa. Um, or as it was. So it's now you, or then you had to prove economic ties. So for most people, that was just opening a corporation, whether that was to trade or not. We very much intend to trade um, and to do things properly. Um, that's where our hearts are, what we want to do, get stuck in here and you know work here as well as in the UK. So you've got to prove your economic ties. Um, you've got to be able to chuck a certain amount of money in the bank, which wasn't very much. Um, so a few thousand dollars, for the main applicants and you know x amount then smaller amount per dependent a um, couple of other little bits and pieces and that's that was pretty much it and then you're going through that process and that's where we're at now so we have our temporary residency to say yeah cool you've got your card your temporary and we're waiting for that just to um someone's just to finish off that file before it becomes permanent hopefully yeah. um so yeah so it's very very simple but you know quite simply we wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for us if we looked at it and we thought, wow, that's an easy place to get to, but oh my gosh, that's the reason why, because um, it's a nightmare, then we just, we absolutely would not have up sticks and brought our family here. But it's the fact that you know, serious pros and cons, more pros than cons, that's why we're here, because we can work here, we can, you know, we can run our business here from anywhere. We've had to design this life for ourselves. So it's, you know, it's not like we were coming to get a job. We had a digital marketing business, but we had to grow it and grow it. And we're still doing that to, you know, um, to replace income lost in the UK and whatever else. But so we're having to put 
all our eggs into that basket to make this work because getting jobs here is not really you know very viable so we've had to design you know that support network and that sort of business and everything for ourselves um but we wouldn't have come here if it wasn't right but yeah and the cons well the cons mainly is that that you're not going to get a job easily you know you're going to have to run your own business and it's going to have to have some uh, you're going to have to do ex business with expats or you're going to have to do business overseas. You have to be a digital nomad realistically to make that work. Um, so we've had to design that, um, which has been a challenge, but, you know, great fun. And here we are. Um, but apart from that, it's well, then it ticked every box. You had that sort of tropical climate. You've had the beautiful weather and culture and people. And, you know, we can benefit, hopefully, from, a, you know, the exchange rates. Um, from sterling to dollars, we can benefit from different, you know, so you start to put that together, you look at the political, let's call it hopefully stability, political stability, the sort of economic stability, um, that it's not a basket case economy or anything else, that it's, you know, it just does what it does and it keeps on doing it, that that made it, that made it viable. It meant we could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So now let's get into, um, as a family, obviously, you guys had to, to, to consider and, and probably research healthcare. Um, so what do you do for healthcare in Panama? And I, can you just, I mean, if something happens or you need a surgery, I mean, there are some countries that are so, are so affordable that people just go to the doctor there. If they need a surgery, they pay out of pocket because it's nothing like it is in, in the UK or the US where it's incredibly expensive to have a surgery. So what do you do for healthcare down there? Well, it's, it's different for us to the UK or anywhere else. And I suppose this probably fell into the con list um, for us because in the UK, it's all through your taxation. It's all free at the point of need. So we wouldn't pay for anything at mm -hmm. all. We never pay to see a doctor, a general practitioner, never pay to go to the emergency room, never pay for an operation. Everything is covered. And if you've never paid into that tax system, this is one of the great things about the UK for whatever reason. And, you know, you're not turned away. No, you know, no one's turned away or denied that treatment. Everybody is going to get that treatment, which is brilliant. You know, big tick in the box for the UK. Um, so we are not used to paying for healthcare. So I know a lot of Americans and Canadians like, oh, wow, this is cheaper. This is more affordable. This is great. This meant it's viable for us. For us, it's like, oh, that's another hurdle. That's something yeah. else that pops off in our heads. So we're sorting through all of that at the moment um, to make sure we've got the best policy and that it's the most affordable. The savings that we make in other areas will cover um, this um, extra expense that we wouldn't have had before so that we're still, you know, mm -hmm. all, all, all good or todo bien, as we say here. Um, so as long as we make those savings in other areas where the UK is very expensive, then that's fine. It covers the healthcare. We haven't had cause to use a doctor or anything yet. Um, thank God. But um what we hear with expats and expat forums and people who are sort of pushing relocation here, and you have to take that with a pinch of salt, as we would say, you know, because people are trying to get you to come here, but they're saying it's very cheap. You can go see someone, it might cost you a couple of dollars and whatever else. But then I've heard experiences where it's been far greater than a couple of dollars, but maybe that's because it was in the city and not in, you know, out in the provinces or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's considered to be far cheaper than the US or anywhere else, as I understand it. Um, but I think, yeah, pe people do that. They just do it sort of as they need it with doctors. Um, income is so low here for local people. They simply, they must just can't have a policy of, you know, any kind that costs, say, $80, $100 or whatever a month. If they're only earning five or $600, it makes you, you know, so I wonder what they do. It must just be they live a healthier lifestyle than uh, most of us in the world and uh, try and stay away from a doctor and hope and pray for the best, uh, which is quite terrifying. Um, or hopefully they're looked after. I don't know enough about it on that side but um yeah so that, that that was a big one for us to sort of try and figure out um so we've been sort of taking advice of different ex expats of what company to go with to make sure that we're covered you, you know you got to make sure every every aspect is covered you know holistically but if are it these, was just a case are sorry, these companies on. offered through panama or are they offered are they these international plans there are international plans and there are companies in Panama. So it's difficult to tell because when you, you could speak to a Panamanian broker, if you like, but it might be on an international plan or a Panamanian plan as with the few conversations we've had so far. But yeah, so I, I think it's more affordable. Um, but for us, obviously, anyone from the UK, it's, it's very different, very different. So, and that's why I think a lot of um, people in the UK would 
usually have gone around the, the European Union or somewhere else where they want to emigrate because the sort of similarities in healthcare and that sort of universal coverage and different things in different countries that just make that, you know, not an issue. Okay. So what is the, um, <clears throat> what is the affordability like when you guys first arrived and you're, you're staying in, in, in various places, staying in Panama city, you're scoping out rentals, um, what are the price ranges for people, for guys maybe that are people that are solo, for families? That can, can you help us understand what people are paying and and then how it changes once you, you know, move outside of Panama City? Yeah, if you're a young, trendy, cool young thing, you probably want to be in Panama City because it's the capital city and, and there's stuff going on and that's where you're going to work. I can't imagine many young people are going to come for a job and it's outside of Panama City. I just can't imagine that. So most of the time it's going to be in Panama City. And then your prices are going to be more comparable. You're going to have cheap restaurants. You're going to have fonders in the city where you can eat for two to five dollars, as I was saying before. And you're going to have rest and you do have restaurants that are the same price as the United States mm -hmm. or the UK. Um, but, you know, you but there's been so much variety that you can choose. Getting around the city is unbelievably cheap. Ubers are cheap. Um, a yellow cab. Um, it's going to cost you two or three or four bucks, you know, to go to places. The metro, which is like what we'd call the tube system, uh, the underground train, you know, I can't remember, I think it's 35 cents a trip. Wherever you want to go on that network, it's 35 cents. So, um, you know, that's unbelievably cheap. Accommodation, you can pay, pay probably more United States prices if you want to live in some sort of swanky, amazing, you know, high rise building or, you know, some sort of condo then you're going to pay more money um, outside of the city. Then, yeah, those prices drop that, you know, we couldn't live based on what we had from the UK. We couldn't live mortgage free, for example, unless we really reduced our lifestyle in the city. Outside of the city, we can be mortgage free, which is kind of should have mentioned that before. That was a big plus <laughs> for why we wanted to be here. But that would mean that we could, you know, so we live mortgage free because it is so much more affordable. Mm -hmm. You can have a Panamanian house. Um, which can be very basic and you can rent that for 250, 300, 300 you know, plus dollars. Um, you can get to um, houses like we're in and you can pay five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a sort of three bedroom house with a communal pool and a tennis court and it's all manicured and lovely and looked after. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and then you can, as grand as you want to be, you can put more money on that, but it gets very, very affordable. Um, for us, gas is cheap or petrol as we call it in the UK. Um, but then that's probably more comparable to the US, which is cheaper, or certainly when we've been doing our road trips than the UK. Mm -hmm. um, food is where it gets crazy. Um, food is a crazy, crazy one for us to understand because it appeared to us, like in the UK, if we went to a supermarket in one town and then went to it, or the same branch of that supermarket in a different part of the town or in another town, it's going to be the same prices because it's that supermarket. Whereas here, I could be wrong on this, but it appeared to us that, before I badmouth these chains, um, it appeared to us that they were different in different areas. So we were like, how, how can that seem to be that the price is different in different supermarkets? We were trying to figure that out, the same supermarket in different places. So we were trying to figure that out. If you eat um, like a local or you eat, you know, the local food, so you're eating meat and fish and rice and fruit and vegetables and all these different things, you're going to live great life, how eat, have a wonderful diet and it's going to be very cheap for an American mm -hmm. and it's going to be pretty much the same I would imagine or very cheap for someone from the UK or cheap enough how, how cheap second, how, how cheap would is it would well, we, we spent $13 yesterday on fruit and vegetables which will with a couple of exceptions of things that we're going to want again like maracuya which is passion fruit because we just can't get enough of them then that would do our fruit and vegetables for the week 13 14 wow. bucks wow um, meat uh, we spent $5 a kilogram on some beautiful, lovely sort of cut, you know, diced up steak, diced up steak and some other things. So gives you a bit of an idea. Rice is very, very cheap, sort of $2 for, a, you know, might be kilogram or two or whatever. So it just seems to last forever. So all of that is pretty cheap. But the second you fancy something from the homeland or you fancy something a bit different, like you want a jar of peanut butter or you want a packet of what you'd call potato chips and we'd call crisps, um, fizzy drinks or anything like that, or a bar of chocolate, it's boom, because it's all imported. 
sure. you know, you want a tin, you want a packet of cereal. You know, in the UK, cereal might have cost us sort of like one ninety nine, one pound fifty, two pound, three pound, or whatever. If it was, you know, here cereal seems to, you know, you can see sort of five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, dollars or whatever on a packet. You think, oh, how can that be? So there's different things that people do when they want their, um, they want their food a bit cheaper, the imported food. So there's, I can't remember what they're called now, um, sort of like a Costco or something. So it's a large. Um, wholesaler where you can get a card and go in and you can buy you know bigger quantities of things and it's much much cheaper so a lot of people do stuff like that mm -hmm. um, but yes so food we're very very cautious in terms of sticking to a budget because we're still paying some bills in the uk um, during this transition time mm -hmm. and we're paying our bills here so we've been very very tight on the budget um, so we've had to be quite cautious and you do have to, you know, really think about food in the way that we hadn't had to before. You know, we ran a tight budget at home in the UK, but that was because we wanted to. It wasn't if we fancied a jar of peanut butter, we couldn't get it. You know, we just get it now. It's, you know, we're walking around the supermarket consciously adding things up and thinking, right, where, where are we up to now, kids? And you know, adding it all up and we're thinking, shall we get the peanut butter? And it's like a, it's like a health insurance decision. It's like, oh, which peanut butter shall we go with? Like, oh, <laughs> Oh, daddy it's okay we don't have to get it if, you, if it's too much trouble and <laughs> so it's uh certainly changed in that respect yeah that's that's great let's um so let's look at some because i know people are going to ask me so look as far as like an apartment cost for let's say just a solo person what are we talking about as far as a, apartment i, th I think you're gonna that be would be crazy. somewhat comfortable for people you know comfortable ideally you know um, I know that there are vast differences in Panama City, but just uh, in Panama City, what can you get a one bedroom for today? I think you're looking at between, I could be wrong, so please everybody do your own research. There's plenty of realtor websites and different things. So, because it wasn't on our radar to look at that sort of living, but from, I, th I think you're looking at between one and $2,000 um, and, and upwards then for the, whatever you know you want on top of that. You can get a nice, you can get a really nice place for that. I've been in um, friends apartments and they're lovely and they pay about sort of fifteen hundred dollars for a sort of two bedroom apartment it's got a nice view okay um but you you know or one bedroom you know you so it's quite expensive in panama city yeah yeah I, i'm quite expensive. shocked when i see because the wages unless you're working for an international company it appears sure. to be on an international contract where it's different to the terms and conditions and everything here if you're on sort of local wages, you know, $25,000 is considered a good wage where they, you know, really, really good wage where they want yeah. their pound of flesh out of you. That seems to be like, wow, if I get to $25,000, I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. And then you see people on $25,000 looking for apartment share arrangements and they're still paying, you know, a, around $1,000, you know, mm -hmm. to share an apartment or to, you know, and you think, Let's yeah. heck, how is that? So it sounds viable? hugely beneficial for people living on a budget to get, get outside of Panama City. Yes, but then that's when Panama, you know, can you make it work? Because as soon as you get outside Panama City, can you afford to live there? And the difficulty that you've got in Panama is the second you want to cross, you get onto that bridge, bang, you're locked in traffic, leaving to come into Panama West Day, um, mm. which is West Panama, which is where we are. Um, but so it can take, they have a community called La Chorera, um, which is far more affordable, really, really affordable homes. That should be a commuter belt for a sort of fine city like Panama City where people can live really cheaply for a couple of hundred dollars in a, in a house, commute into the city. If you want to do that, you're leaving your house at four o'clock in the morning to get to what, Panama City. What area is that again? What area? So uh, La Chorrera, uh, which is L-A, second word, C-H-O-R-R-E-R-A. Um, and that's Panama West Day, West Panama. So that gives you an example of somewhere where it's really cheap, but the ability to live there and commute to earn the Panama City money, which isn't even that much more exciting and a local wage just isn't possible or, or it is, but it ruins the quality of life for so many people. And there's a train and different things rumored to be on the way for Panama West Day, which would change all of that. So hopefully that will come. That'll be pushed through mm -hmm. full steam ahead, pun intended. Um, and then, you know, that will mean that people can live in different areas and get into the city. But at the moment, you are going to pay a city price for your living. Um, if you need to work in the city, because you're pretty much you're gonna have to live there. And frankly, mm -hmm. if you're a young person wanting to experience Panama City, you're sure. gonna want to live there. And, but if you're a person who wants to just kind of stay outside of the city and work as a digital nomad, 
you oh, can, the sky's you can, your limit. The sky's your, you know, the world's you can, your oyster. Yeah, I mean, you can live really frugally or re retirees that are going, hey, I just, I'm looking for a place where I have, I got a, you know, a thousand dollar budget. Retirees love it here. If you've got a military pension or you've got something, or you, we speak to people like that quite regularly, and somebody might have a thousand dollars from the USA, a thousand dollars a month. They're living here quite comfortably. In fact, they're living a great life. They're yeah. paying a small, small amount of rent electricity bills unless you're hammering the air conditioning all the time are very low broadband is pretty cheap phone plans via phone is cheap gas is cheap you know whatever else it's food can be cheap if you eat in the right places you could eat out every day at a fonda um yeah. whatever else yeah. and and yeah thousand dollars very very comfortably for somebody outside of the city get and into this typically city. covers yeah, it tricky and Andy, that can typically cover like utilities and in your Wi-Fi and cell phone and yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cell phones are not expensive. Um, broadband, your, you know, your Wi-Fi eh, to us it isn't expensive. Doesn't you know, not expensive. Um, electricity can be very, very cheap depending on where you are. A lot of people favor Bukete, um and retirees, and a lot of the time don't want the heat, and they'll go to Bukete where it's cooler in the mountains. They don't need air conditioners or whatever generally there. And then bills are lower again, although it's a sought after area. So the real estate prices are, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's still very affordable living there. Um, so, yeah, get outside. If you can make it work as a digital nomad or whatever else, then you can live very well in different parts. You can be on, you know, incredible world class surfing beaches. You can be, you know, I say world class. I don't surf. I like to think they are. Um, you can be in the best communities. You can be in just beautiful idyllic islands and places, and it's and it, you can live a cheap life. But if you need to work, you need access to a quality job or whatever else. You're going to be in the city, and you're going to have to, you know, balance things up and yeah. budget very carefully. Well, I think there's such a there's such an exodus right now of of um, older, um, you know, pe retirees that are that are looking and exploring for the first time ever, you know, um, different places to 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 call home, you know, after yes. they retire, because because the the, the statistics are are um, really, really high as far as the, the, the number of people that really don't have any retirement savings. So now you have a lot of people in the United States, a huge millions and millions of people that are looking for alternative places yeah. to live because America's become so unaffordable. I mean, it's just, it's a tough place to live all over. I mean, every city you go to, it's really incredibly expensive. I'm, I'm originally from the Detroit area and Detroit has become incredibly expensive, you know? So it's, it's, I think people are searching and exploring different options. And some people are heading out east to Southeast Asia. Uh, that, that's really incredibly affordable out there. But there's also a lot of people that go to Mexico, South America, Central America. And I'm wondering- Yeah, they, you, they've done the, oh, sorry, sorry. Do you see a lot of retirees down there that are coming from Canada or oh, uh, the tons US? and tons and tons of retirees from Canada and America. They've got what they call the pensionado visa, which really the government has done a blinder on this really, but that's the UK for done really well. Um, they've played a blinder. They've, you know, they've really pitched it right. This pensionado visa, they, I think they take care of some of the fees. Also it's reduced fees to actually pay for your visa. Um, it's again, it's a very easy visa. They haven't to, to obtain or relatively, it's all relative. They haven't done away with it. Like, you know, the changes to the other visa. Um, and as long as you can prove a certain amount of income, I can't think what it is now. It might be say $1,200 or whatever yeah. in fixed income, I think it is. So it's going to yes. be, you know, your retirement, you know, that you can prove you're going to get on a monthly basis and some other bits and pieces, then, you know, welcome and then you can have cheaper this and cheaper that you get discounts on this discounts on that here there and everywhere quite a lot of discounts it's very um it's a really good setup so we see a lot of people doing that but in addition to what you've said i think there's some really interesting reasons um there's certainly certainly exactly what you said people just say i cannot afford i'm a veteran um my military pension i haven't got a hope of staying in america staying in florida staying in where i was and but you know, so here I am, and yeah, I love it here, and but I really miss home, but I just can't afford it. And for some, it's like I'd never go back. You know, I'd go back in a box. I love it so much, and so you know, 
there's there's those kind of reasons that reason is definitely definitely a, there's covid has sort of played a part in sort of people thinking about like what do i want from life where do i want to be and people sort of and we fall into that box where we were sort of thinking really differently like what is it we you know where do we want to be let's do it now come on let's let's go for it um so there's that and then there's um sadly politics uh, plays a big part in it as well it's amazing the amount of people that you meet who are very angry and uh, what's well, not amazing it's understandable very angry at the administrations in their country their home country and they want something different um and they're furious and and that I, I, I get, I get entirely that people feel like that. I find some of it quite intriguing because people talk about, you know, the COVID rules and different things and what their country's done and how it's gone downhill rapidly and they've done this. And, but then those things are the same here. They're not any different here. And in some ways they're stricter here, you know, but so I don't get the, wow, I'm free. I've escaped, but yeah. there is, you know, and here I am wearing a mask in the street or whatever it's so yeah people there's a number of reasons but I, I would think those were the top three definitely the number one is what you've said is affordability um at the moment i would say that sort of political sort of being ang angry at sort of politics in your home country is probably number two and number three is that sort of covid let, you know stuff it let's do it now sense of adventure yeah andy do you do you are are there um places around panama and cities and nice little cities outside of panama city where you could where you could, you know, walk to the beach. You don't have to really worry about a car. You could ride your bike. You could go and you could walk to the restaurants and little cafes and and live frugally like that for under a thousand yeah. or under fifteen hundred or under a thousand. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Where we are now, you could do that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, you've got Coronado. That's not for everybody uh, because it is that sort of gated community. But the Panama, you've got the, the Pan American Highway. Bang, just goes, you know, straight through the country. Um, so you'll find communities at both sides of the road a lot of the time. And you've got Coronado as the beach side of the road. Um, you're probably going to find, or you are going to find higher prices there because it's a bit more exclusive, although there's probably deals to be had with the right realtor. Cross the road, Las Lajas and whatever else is the community. It's a bit more local. It's a bit more affordable. El Valle de Anton, different places and mountain communities. Absolutely beautiful. You can be half an hour from the beach. You can be up in the mountains. You can be on the beach in uh, somewhere like La Ermita San Carlos. Um, Coronado has all your malls, your shops, it's got a movie theater, it's got, you know, so you've got a good quality of life and access to the beach. Pedersi, very isolated, where I was talking about before, such an incredible place, but you're still an hour's drive, if that appeals to you, from Chitre, where they've got movie theaters and malls and shops and you know, stores, um, all of that sort of thing that you'd want. Um, Boquete, which is very, very appealing to expat communities. So saying up in the mountains, that cooler weather, that's half an hour from David, the second city where, you know, it's mega hot, but you've got, um, we haven't been to David yet or Boquete, but you've got absolutely pretty much everything you could want. Um, and you've got beaches sort of pretty close by. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can, you can definitely outside of Panama city, you can pretty much take your pick. Um, there's going to be things that go against you. So if you're going to find a cheaper house, it's going to be a local community. And we love that. We want to be speaking Spanish where we can with our neighbors as our language ability grows and whatever else, and our confidence grows. Um, but, you know, you're going to have cultural differences. You're going to have roosters at three or four o'clock in the morning. You're going to yeah, have yeah. Um, music late at night and people partying into the evening. Or what. And if that's you want to join in with that, whatever, you, I'm sure you're more than welcome. If you don't, and that's not your thing, then, you know, you're going to have to, you really got to work to find the right mix of housing for you somewhere it's cheap, but gives you the quiet life or somewhere that's cheap that, you know, so you, you've really got to weigh up all the different factors. Yeah, well, I just love what you're doing and how you described it, because from from what you're describing is you you guys have just immersed yourself into the culture and you're becoming a part of the culture and you love the culture and i think that that's terrific and you're you're excited about meeting people and and it, from panama where you can you know develop your your spanish speaking skills and that's going to be hugely beneficial for your kids as well your spanish is outstanding man you got oh you, it's you, terrible thank you very but much but i mean but i mean you you know the <laughs> pronunciate the pronunciation and the rolling and all that stuff the, the rolling of the tongue I mean, that takes time because there are people around here in America that say gracias, right? Yeah, yeah. 
takes a little while before they go gracias, gracias, you know, or if it's Spain, gracias. With the I, I love, that. I love that. I'm glad it's not here because it's a bit of effort that. But yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's. it's, it's I love that. I patient. love. I love that you guys are just kind of fully immersing oh, yourself you. in the culture because there's so many expats that go over there, to a, a different culture, and they they stick around with expats and they don't learn any of the language and and they and they go to the the, the Western restaurants and they really kind of do it, for the 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 sole purpose of hey it's it's affordable. But I really don't want to be here, and I think that's just awful to go to another yeah, country and not wanting to be. There. Yeah, it happens a lot. I one of the things I end up saying to people is, uh, you know, is uh, "Lo siento por mi español." You know, I'm, I'm sorry about my Spanish. Sort of thing. Sorry for my Spanish. And you know, whether it's somebody on a checkout or whatever, a check, you know, and they look at me and they're like, "Oh, you know," because they're just so grateful that you've tried. And they're, you know, absolutely. I don't know what they're saying back up, but it's like, oh, don't be silly. Don't be silly. It's, you know, you're so handsome and we're just so right. grateful that you're such a handsome man that's trying. Like, laugh or like, no. Um, but whatever they're saying, because they, they, they're grateful that you're making an effort. But we see people yeah. who are going into restaurants and coffee shops and standing by counters and they've walked in the door. They've never seen these people before in their lives. And they're saying, I'm going to have two macchiatos. I'm going to have a slice of that cake and I'm going to have, a da -da 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 -da, you know, whatever else. And they don't even know that that person can understand them. They don't say, you know, um, usted habla inglés, you know, you know, a, a polite form of, you know, excuse me, you know, do you speak English or señor or señorita or whatever. They're just straight in with the, I'll take one of those, two of those. But, yeah. And there's just this assumption that they're going to, you know, and, and don't, thankfully, that's quite rare. We're not seeing that. I'll probably exaggerate. We're not seeing that all the time. But, you know, you see it and you sort of, sure, ah, yeah. a little bit. Um, but it, it's it's a real shame, and we see quite regularly people saying, "Ah, oh, come to this town." You, you see this on these videos that people are making to promote the country, which is great. Good luck to them. But you know, come to this town; it's great. You you know, you won't have to learn Spanish. You right. won't have yeah. to. That's not what we want. No. And hopefully that we've misunderstood that, and they're pitching it in a different way. That's kind of like you won't have to, but it would be encouraged and beneficial. But sure. in the yeah. transition period, you won't need to. Yeah, and that's great. But but we do get this vibe from some sort of small sector that it's just like, oh, no, you don't need to learn Spanish. Don't worry about that. Come and live here. Come and, and yeah, it just doesn't appeal. Yeah, that's, so, that's uh, really excitement. That's it's just the growing and the learning and the dive. And the horrible frustration. Yeah, well, yeah, it's definitely frustration because it's called, it's growth and you're learning, you know, but that's, that's the fun of it. I mean, that's the exciting part. And I mean, what you're doing for your kids, I think it's just amazing. I, to to oh, expose thanks. your kids, you know, so they're going to be bilingual and they're going to be fluent and and living in a different culture and in a completely different perspective of living and life and the way people do things here is very different from what they do in the UK. It's just really terrific. I lo I love that man. No, thank you very much, and it, it's cool. And they are I mean, kids. It's just incredible how fast they're picking it up. Yeah, so so fast, and they're playing out with the kids in the street, and they're really getting this sort of talk. Well, in the place we were living previously, and they're really getting that total immersion. And you know, they are just coming on in leaps and bounds, just absolutely incredible. Yeah, they're so little... sort of, I'm so proud of them, but so jealous of them at the same time. Yeah, they're little <laughs> sponges, man. They're little sponges. Oh, it's crazy. So yeah. crazy. We're competing with all of the other stuff that's going on in our brain, right? Well, I, I, I can't think fast enough. We were in a taxi yesterday, and um, it's always five dollars, and I sometimes I just can't, you know, and I, you know, Cinco is five, Cinquenta is 50. And just sometimes you're trying to think a bit too quickly. And I was like, uh, Cinquenta, you know, which is like 50. Yes. And he's like, si, 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 si. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cinco, Cinco. Yeah. And he was laughing and laughing that, you know, I've just offered him $50 for this ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did, quick have you, have you guys had any exposure to the wildlife there with, with the Oh, slow? yeah. Well, I mean, in the monkeys. city, beautiful. In the city, you can go into the rainforest and you can see sloths. I mean, if you've got really, really good eyesight and the sloth is hanging on a piece of tree branch that's bringing him down to your eye line, then you might just see him. But no, we, so we could just see these sloths in the distance, but we saw every kind of, um, you know, walk around the rainforest, the mariposas, the butterflies, the, um, we saw just crazy sort of insects and different things incredible birds um like turtles um maybe terrapins i think which are delicious as hell they seem to be yeah um, but just crazy crazy cool wildlife 
Uh, we went out onto Lake Gatun, on, uh, which is the Panama Canal, if you know, flows into the lake and sort of mm -hmm. carries on. So you, mm -hmm. you take your boat trip and you're passing all the big ships and you go to these, you know, monk, call it Monkey Island, but it's a series of islands. And we're there feeding the monkeys out of the palm of our hands with bananas. So you've got the white faced capuchins, the, um, got the howl of the monkeys in the distance. We rode, went horse riding, trail riding for my birthday. First time I've ever done that. Thank you, Mrs. A. I've always wanted wow, to do that. Nice. And um, yeah, we're riding along. And I was like, Peros? Peros? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like dogs, dogs. And the guy's like, no, 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 no. And it was, um, it was the howler monkeys. And they're just they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. As you get wow. Around, it's so loud. And you've got just, we haven't seen it. Well, we have seen a snake in a bag, thankfully. <laughs> Not seen a snake in the wild. <laughs> We've seen a crazy big um, tarantula, um, absolutely crazy. I got bitten by a freaking rooster. I don't know how the hell that happens. That's oh, not even wow. cool, cool wildlife. They're just normal. They're everywhere. But we stayed in this Airbnb for a night, and this rooster came along, and he was huge, and he sort of strutting his stuff. And I was like, oh, hey, boy. And he just, and he came over, and he just plunged his beak into me. It was like a hammer driving a nail through a blood spot. I was like, oh. So I grabbed, yeah. so you with, I must make completely clear, no intention to hurt this animal whatsoever. I grabbed the machete, because that's quite normal practice, <laughs> grabbed the machete from the car, because I thought it's just a long object I can sort of keep them at bay with. So I sort of swung this machete just to keep them away, because we were sort of boxed into a corner. Wow. And he wow. was just emboldened. He was just thought, he read the room, and he just said, you're not going to use that machete, and just charged at me and did me all over again. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So, so we swooped him out with a with a yard brush and we just sort of swung him away. And then the lady appears. You, you haven't seen my rooster, have you? Um, yeah, we just played tennis with him. Wow. No. I had but no idea fine. that I'd had no idea Gently. roosters were aggressive like that. We just get this cool mix of wildlife, oh, animals. And it, it's 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 great. And as you say, for the kids, it's just phenomenal. We swung through the jungle on vines like Tarzan, you know, my son, Noah, who's 10, he's really bold and he's swinging. He's about six or eight foot up and he's on this vine. I've lifted him up and he's swinging across. I said, Noah, I said, you, you brushed past the second vine. You could have been like Tarzan and just grabbed it and carried, you know, transitioned to the next vine and carried on. He's like, I'm going to do it, Dad, do it. So we swung him across and he reached out and he grabbed the vine and bang, hit the floor. <laughs> One of the best pieces of video we've got. <laughs> Put that on video for year, or YouTube for years to come for him. Exactly. That's funny. Oh, yeah, that's a great. Yeah, I had no idea that roosters were aggressive like that. I had no idea. Well, we, we've not seen one before uh, in that sense, that, or not aggressive. But yeah, um, but they're everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Um, thankfully, where we're living now, there aren't. So we accept it. Don't, don't get me wrong. We, you know, we don't move to an area and think, oh, there's roosters. We, you know, we don't complain or moan or, you know, it's life. It's the countryside. It's cool. It is, yeah. Uh, but it's nice that they're not where we are now. A bit yeah. of a rooster respite. <laughs> <laughs> After that experience. After that one, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Now, when you guys, did you guys um, ever go to the Coca-Cola Cafe when you were in Panama City? No, no. Should we? Yeah. For an hour they, away. The Coca-Cola Cafe is the oldest cafe in um, Panama City. And, oh, it's got a, and it's got it. a really, really rich history from what I hear, you know, there's from, from, uh, you, you know, Fidel Castro and the planning oh, I, of, yes, uh, you know, I think we Nor have in Noriega. Casco Viejo. It's in Costco Viejo. Yes. Sorry. I apologize. Yes, we have. Yeah. Sorry. It, okay. Yeah. That's a really cool cafe and it's old school yes. still. So you got guys in there that are smoking cigars, reading the newspaper and, you know, they all, it's, it's a really, really interesting Panamanian place, you know, and it's yeah. the old, it's the oldest cafe in 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 Casco Viejo or and in, in Panama City, so it makes it really interesting. And then we stayed in a hotel called Hotel Cologne, and they changed the name a couple times. I think it might be called Hotel Antigua now. Okay, and it's the oldest hotel in Panama City as well, and it's in Casco Viejo as well. And it's a oh, really neat. Amazing. It's a really neat old building with a lot of history, and it's got a little um, uh, rooftop terrace that we spent some time on, where you have a view of the, you know, the of Panama. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So if you ever get over there again, um, check out uh, 
hotel. I think it's Antigua now. Oh, definitely, definitely do that. Thank you. And then Coca Cola oh. Cafe. Yeah, but, Costco is amazing. Yeah. What are some of the things? If the 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 last the uh, you know the question that I have is if you were to just say you know this is what Panama has to offer people that that you know the highlights of Panama. What's really intriguing about moving there that you found that's really just stunningly beautiful or just fascinating about living in Panama, what would you say? I would think because it's a small country, um, it's the variety. You've got a variety of sort of landscapes and people and wildlife and whatever packed into this, this relatively small, pretty accessible country uh, where you can be on tropical islands, you can be on incredible beaches, you can be on the mankind's most amazing feats of engineering, like the Panama Canal. You can be in a really cool, uh, developed, developing city. You can be, um, you know, you've got wonderfully welcoming people, especially as, the, as you get into the sort of countryside as well, more so really warm and welcoming, and where they've really got time for you. And you've got sort of all of that. So I, I would say because you've just got this real rich variety You've got this variety of people. Um, and also, I think one of the things that appeals to me, it's a bit, a bit weird, wouldn't appeal to everybody else. It's a very entrepreneurial country. People that you meet, everybody's got a bit of a side hustle or they're doing something. There's quite a cool story, you know, because it's a country where you've got to do something a little bit different. You can't just like, oh, I'm going to open a store. Or I'm going to, you know, so you're meeting people that are really thinking outside the box and they've got cool ideas or because they're living here, they're, generally doing something fun or interesting, or they've got a cool business or a cool story, or they started a new business and they're sort of capitalizing on this trend or that trend or, you know, trying to, so I, I, that really appeals to, to me and my nature that it's quite a sort of forward thinking, sort of different, sort of very cool, vibrant place. Yeah, and there's some really good, like where you're at, it looks like there's some pretty good um, uh, surfing out there right oh God, i haven't even mentioned yeah sorry you've got surfing you've got fishing you've got all those sort of activities sorry yeah um like diving I, i'm guessing that there's yeah diving divers. you've got diving where we are in punta charme is some of the best as i'm told sort of kite surfing in the world you know that's just down the road that's a couple of kilometers from here um so you got you know kite surfing um fishing is is incredible uh, you know like i say diving we we went just just not diving but snorkeling um off um is La Iguana, um, which is just off Petter Sea. Oh my goodness, it's just like the fish you see just sort of like, you know, 50 yards from the shore and just incredible in the clearest water with the most incredible different types of fish. It's, it's just beautiful. So if somebody were wanting to retire and just, you know, take up a hobby like that, just say, I want to learn to surf and I want to take up fishing or I want to snorkel and scuba, you know, what a plate, kite surf, what a place to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you, um, Andy. At, at no, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all of this information about Panama. Um, I think it's terrific how you're how you're living there, and I love the fact you have your family and you guys are completely immersing yourself in that world, and it's it's truly amazing. Um, do you want to share a little bit about um, cracking social media? And and uh, it's you're kind of you guys are like digital nomads as well. You work out of your house. Yeah. And yeah, this is absolutely. an online business that you offer to people. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, so crackingsocialmedia.co.uk, um, so co.uk. Um, we'll be making that a bit more international with a different domain very soon as well. And, the, well, the whole new website. Um, so we, we look after social media for, you know, for companies. At the moment, it's entirely in the UK. We're just in some discussions with Panamanian companies at the moment. Um, you know, bilingually, we're going to have to, you know, source some really good people, you know, to tick the bilingual box. Um, some of the services here won't require us to be bilingual. A lot of people are targeting, say, purely expats with real estate or different things. We want to look at how we can work with those people. So we, we love what we do. We're, we're passionate about small businesses and we want to help people get the best profile and the best reach they possibly can with their messages to make sure their business is promoted and targeted to the exact right audience that it can possibly be. And that, that excites us. You know, years ago, you'd open a newspaper and there'd be an advert. You know, you may or may not pick up that paper. If you do buy that paper, you may or may not see that advert. And if you, you know, whereas social media, you can really target an advert and it's, it's to you and you may or may not be the right person when you're reading that newspaper to buy that product. 
you know, and it's, it excites us that you can actually target something to the right people, to your core audience, wherever they may be. And so we love working with businesses to, to do all of that, you know, social media marketing, email marketing, various different camp digital marketing campaigns. So, um, and if we can help Panamanian businesses with, um, perfect English copywriting and different things as well. Um, then that's something that we're quite excited to do. Yeah, that sounds terrific, Andy. Well, thank you so much and all the success to you with your, your cracking social media. Thanks again for being here, man. I truly appreciate it. And yeah, I look thank forward, you so much. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you when I head down to Panama. Come on down, we'll go kite surfing. <laughs> I've, I've never done that. I'd love to Not try me. it, bud. What's, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay. Cheers. Thanks a lot.